right. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for joining us here on the Age of Success podcast. Today, we have Mariana Lopez all the way in Florida. How are you doing today? Uh, really good. Had a good day today, so all smiles here. Yeah, yeah. It's good, it's good to hear. And then the phone call that we had, it's been so long since I've actually seen you. I think it was actually a couple of years ago back in Orlando, Florida, right? Kind of crazy. The other day, I got a Snapchat memory of all of you guys, and I was just like in tears, so sad. I was like, <laughs> when, was, when is this going to happen again? When can we do this? Yeah, yeah. Those those are some highlights there, and to yeah. see the future that 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 would be a blessing there. So yeah, of course. I'm sure so, we can make it happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's get right into it. So throughout this podcast, we'll be asking her different questions about her academic pursuits, her personal endeavor pursuits, some of her background experiences with either friend groups, societies, organizations, getting all the different details and the course, the inside experience that she has to give us and to the fellow listeners here. So before you guys go, check the link in the description and also at the end as well for her Instagram and also other further information. So let's get to it. So Mariana, what degree and where are you at right now? So I am currently studying civil engineering at the University of Florida um, with a minor in sustainability studies. All right. And, and, and what, what inspired you to get into that field or to be able to pursue that track? Of course. Um, so I've always kind of loved math. Um, I mean, when I was really little, it was not my thing, but I guess with practice, you know, yeah. you get better at something, you kind of learn to love it, it becomes your passion. Um, and I kind of wanted to see what I could do with math and make that a, you know, my career pursue at least. And so, um, in high school, I joined quite a few clubs. It was like math stuff, some English stuff, science stuff, business stuff. And I got a lot of hands-on experience with business, like business and running it and kind of the, the behind the scenes of what goes on with it. Um, through a club and then managing the school store at my school but I didn't really get a lot of hands-on experience with the math so I had to go out of my way to you know search for for different things I could do um, and one of those paths that came to me was engineering and I have two uncles and an aunt who do engineering one of them is a software engineer the other two are civil engineering so I kind of just had a sit down talk with them kind of like a one-on-one a -on -one like we're doing um, and just, you know, Q&A style, ask them what they do, why they love what they do, how many years they've done it. Um, a lot of questions that just, you know, I was intrigued about. So after those conversations, I kind of realized, okay, this is something that I could be doing. I kind of like, like it. So I, why not, you know, test that theory out and, and see where it goes from there. So I was actually able to shadow an engineering firm here uh, locally in Lake Worth, where I live. And uh, this was spring break senior year and I got a lot of hands-on experience you know wearing a hard hat going out and actually doing field work um, <laughs> kind of seeing all the the technology that they use for day-to-day uh, -day stuff and um, some of the engineers that I, I um, shadowed were mechanical civil uh, electrical a few others but the one that really like stood out to me was civil and all the work that they do um, so you know I went into college with that as my major didn't know if I was going to love it um, and I think that I, a lot of people go into college, you know, thinking that they're going to do one thing, but might end up changing it just because, you know, they don't fall in love with it or they don't see themselves in those shoes four or five years down the line. But definitely think that has been a good fit for me. I've so far loved it, all the classes that I've taken. Um, I didn't really get into taking like coursework regarding my major up until, you know, my sophomore year, late sophomore year. But doing so, I kind of got like, a little a better feel of, of what education I'm going to you know continue going through the next two years and and seeing that 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 I'm doing good in it so I, it should be something I, I feel passionate about or enjoy doing yeah wow thank you for giving us that insight especially in the mm -hmm. high school experience being able to link that right into your your university and collegiate area that's something that a lot of people don't get either that or they exactly. miss out on that experience and I like that you mentioned that you went to talk to these professionals on these one-on-one -on -one terms. And with doing that, you're able to get a feel of how they think, what are some of their pros of, of that field. And do you mind talking to us about maybe what questions you asked them or maybe what are some hints or tips that, that they told you? Yeah, totally. Um, so a lot of the questions that I went in asking were very specific to you know the work that they do. 
But I think the one question that I would constantly ask any professional I talk to is, how do you get over the redundancy of your job? Because at the end of the day, no matter what job you're in, there's going to be some redundancy, similar projects you're working on, um, same people you're talking to, same coworkers. There's redundancy within any job field. Um, and that's just been like, I, I guess it's not been the biggest concern of mine just because I, I know I'm going to have to face it and you know, you know yourself and how you overcome things. But I guess, I guess like every single time I ask this, it's more like I want to get the perspective of other people and how they do this throughout their job. But um, that's been one of the questions just, just to get me a little bit of a feel for, do you actually like your job and what you're doing? Or did you choose this? Now you're stuck with it. You're not passionate about it. So why do I want to talk to you about it if that's not going to help me in any way? Um, so it's a little harsh, that question for anybody. But it seems like it's the question that hits people like, crud, do I, I, do I know what I love to do? Can, can I tell this girl that I like to do what I do or not? Um, but other than that, some, some questions to ask, uh, I guess, professionals to give you some insight would be um, just kind of like, for them to explain their path, um, not everyone ends up where they're at today. They might have had four or five other jobs beforehand before they end up in the one they love. So kind of just guiding you through through their um, education and, and their um, career. I think that's always been really helpful for me. So I can, you know, ask specific questions relating to that as they come up. Uh, just getting to know that person and what they've done and how maybe that can shape you or maybe you can take a similar path. Yeah, yeah, those are great questions, and they're so in depth, and it allows them to give that little, uh, that that little layer of whether or not do they a answer truthfully or mm -hmm. room for error, also that you can probably see also when you're sitting in front of them. But wow, and we we didn't talk about this much, but you you want to talk about some of the business experience and maybe some of that leadership that you gained from doing. Uh, I think you said your club or organization. Yeah. Um, so back in high school, um, I kind of just decided, you know, I'm, I'm going to need a little bit of these soft skills going into college and, and you know, we got to build the resume somehow. So, um, I did, um, quite a few organizations. It's been only two years, but I feel like it's been so long that I'm like, um, how many were they? <laughs> but, um, the one that really, you know, took my focus and I was really involved with was the school store. So basically I was a manager of it, but it was a class that I took, which was ACE business, which is like an AP class. Um, and basically during that time, uh, we were in charge of like making the t-shirts, selling them, promoting them and, you know, just distributing them out. So it was just like a, a small idea because we didn't have a school store. So it started, kind of started off with me. Um, and then I hope that it's still going. I honestly have, I've lost a little bit of contact with the professor, the teacher that did that. So um, don't know if it's still going around, but I definitely know for a fact that it was not the easiest thing starting anything from scratch um, and really trying to figure out like, oh, is this going to work? Is this a good idea? Um, a lot of that came with delegating and I'm a very independent, you know, I want to do everything the right way, my way. Um, very conscientious about what I'm doing so it was really difficult at the time for me to be like hey I need your help I need you to do this this that on top of my school work and, and be able to manage the school store and you know tell people hey like kind of need your help in this can you do this can you do this for me um, there was a lot of like analysis of like the t-shirt companies we're going to use or if we even have materials so um, I guess a lot of that just created like a not so independent person of myself I realized that you can be dependent and it's not a bad thing um that doing so you you can realize that maybe that's one of your weaknesses that you got to work on and being able to trust other people is really important wow yeah and definitely a lot of those skills are so transferable to especially the engineering area and especially if you're going to be doing projects here in college or later after you're able to you have you you already have that feel, especially like just like you said, the soft skills, the communication mm -hmm. between making partnerships, how to form a team. Exactly. Do I need to do legal stuff? Do I need this person who knows this better than I do? And you're able to admit that, knowing your weakness and your strengths, and then putting mm -hmm. them together and seeing how to build something from the ground up. And that's definitely a skill that's so uh I wouldn't say rare, but it's so it's hard to teach. You just have to do yeah. it yourself and get the hands-on experience. Exactly. You have to figure it out yourself. Nobody can tell you 
hey, this is how you learn this. It's kind of like, okay, through all these different things I've done in life, it's shaped me the way I am. And I can say that I'm a independent or dependent person. I'm a courageous or maybe a little shy at times, kind of step out of your box at times. It, 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 it all shapes you in, in some way. And I hope it's for the best for, you know, the listen, the people listening to this right now. Wow. Okay. And going forward. So I know these skills were, were very, um, were pretty good in building the characteristics and uh, getting you set for college and other areas, your internships also. As for finding friend groups or organizations, how does one do that? So from, from maybe from a perspective of a, a student or maybe someone who's in the middle area here who, who's listening, how do they go about finding and taking that first step to get into a circle or get into a network? Okay, yeah. Um, so I'll kind of give the background based on my high school and then my college um, just for, you know, I don't know who's listening out there. Maybe this will be any helpful advice for any, but any age group. Um, but in high school, I did a lot of research on my own. And um, it also really depends on the school you're in and, and what classes you're taking and what resources there are provided for you. Um, but all of these things were made easily available to me just because I saw flyers posted around my school and it said hey come join this club or come join that club we have a meeting during lunch at this time so I kind of just decided to start going to a lot of meetings and just getting out there seeing who was part of the club I would try and get some friends to come with me so I didn't feel so lonely um and that maybe they were interested as well I could be you know doing something with my friends and, and enjoying the time with them as well uh, so in high school, it was really easy to find opportunities because they were kind of just handed to me. Um, you know, it's, it's as easy as just stepping into a classroom, going to a meeting every Wednesday after school or during Wednesday during lunch. Um, so in high school, it was definitely a lot easier. As for college now, um, there are thousands, not, well, that's a little exaggeration, but there's a hundreds of clubs on campus and finding those is not hard, but I guess putting yourself out there to do these things with a student body of so many people and you not knowing if you're going to click with those people who are involved is it's really hard to put yourself out there at times. And um, the way I went about it was, thankfully, my roommate was super easy going and she kind of did a lot of things with me, but there was some things I had to do independently. And one of the organizations I found online, um, and a lot of the organizations you just got to research them, find them on Facebook, uh, Instagram, the, your school websites, and, you know, reach out to someone and say, hey, are you guys having a meeting sometime? And not feeling like you can't, you know, talk to somebody else who is just a peer. At the end of the day, they're, they were in your position at some point as well. Um, so one of the clubs I decided to join was Engineers Without Borders. And what we do in the club is basically a lot of engineer outreach to a small community in Peru. And we're trying to help them in any way we can through engineering projects. So I got involved with that this past year. And that was something I did alone. I kind of just went to one of their like meet and greet meetings, meet the people who are already part of the, the team and said, hey, I know you guys have already been recruiting for a week. I'm extremely interested in your club what can I do to make sure that I have a spot on your team? Um, and they really enjoyed that initiative. They had not seen anybody, you know, just demand like, hey, I'm really passionate about what you guys are doing. I want to be a part of that too. Um, so it's really getting that foot in the door. And they were super welcoming, told me that the application was still available for like another one or two days, that it was super limited because they only take in like 10-ish people per year because um, it's a really small club because they're, it's very niche but um so I decided to apply and actually got an interview and and you know made the club and I'm super passionate about what we're doing currently we're working on a water reservoir project and that is unfortunately that got delayed because of COVID but you know we're still working at it and making sure that we can go back um and you know help out a community that needs our help wow wow yeah, and all of that, being able to connect and network and then finally see something through to the very end that actually benefits people somewhere across the world that are able to actually see that and feel it and actually live through what you're able to implement into their lives. That's, that's amazing. And I like how you mentioned you're pretty much there banging on the doors of this group 
what can I do to make sure I have a spot and that I'm here with you guys? Yeah. And especially, yeah, especially uh, high, other high schoolers or some other people in college, they may not have the experience and they may just be kind of, oh, um, hello. And then they might not even be able to talk or make those um, first impressions there. But being able to do that, that kind of, just like you said, that, that does kind of guarantee you a spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I know, and to add to that, I think for anybody out there listening, like never feel the fear that you don't know what you're doing because half of the time, most people don't know what they're doing. They're just winging it and it works out in their favor. Um, I definitely went into that club knowing that I don't have experience in, in a lot of civil engineering aspects. The one thing that I brought to the team was being bilingual because we're talking to people in Peru, they speak Spanish, I can bring that to the table. But I definitely knew that it was gonna be a learning experience. There was people that were freshmen, sophomores, junior, seniors. It was definitely gonna be a mentorship along the way I was going to have somebody right beside me telling me, hey, look, this is what I've learned. This is what you're going to learn. Here you go, learn it. Um, and that's exa exactly how it ends up going. You just, you step your foot in the door, as I said, and then you kind of just go from there. You learn day by day how the club works. If it, if it is your fit, because you always have the option to back out if you don't like what they're doing. Um, and kind of make it your own. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's it, are you passionate about what you're doing and, and do you want to keep doing it? the same way you are you got to change your paths and adapt wow especially right now i would say to the listeners right now if you can write down some of the questions and other words that she's is saying because even for me i'm taking mental notes and when right when this is done i'm going to be playing this back and writing some notes also so i'm yeah. glad you say that <laughs> oh yeah and they're very useful and but they're also so real also they're so applicable because some people or even myself sometimes or probably other people who are listening People overthink things a lot. And then that doubt, it causes different distractions here in your mind. You're not able to go through with certain things. And then you, you may be losing out on, on opportunities that would be amazing, such as this one. Yeah, I can, I can definitely say that I've been uh, quite an overthinker throughout the years. It's, it's always taken me that extra push um, to get to do things. And I, and I think I finally found the, you know, the right balance of pushing myself, but not too much because you know, sometimes you overwork yourself and you try and do everything and you can't do anything at all. And that's not great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how would you say maybe speaking another language or maybe being part of a different uh, ethnic background also helps in being in these environments or how do you um, fit in also from being um, from a woman's perspective, especially I, I think from, for some people, some people might think engineering is mo mostly, um, male dominated but as recent years within the stem area it seems like more women are becoming more prominent in the field yeah i i definitely think so i know um when i was talking to my aunt uh, about all the civil engineering things i've been doing for the past two years and she was like how many girls are there in your classes and i told her like i mean it's not a 50 50 there's still a lot more boys than there are girls but it's a little more you know I guess adequate I, there's still a lack of representation 100 percent, but it's it's seeing that okay not two versus like 12 it's a good you know five versus seven or whatnot i mean there's a lot better balance i like to say in, in a lot of my classes or i've seen um and i think it's just taken a lot of the uh, promoting stem within a, a lower age group so starting off kids young and, and knowing hey these are opportunities that you have from the start so getting them hands-on work with what stem is and and making sure that girls know that that's an opportunity that when it comes to you know the college level you don't have to take a a normal path or i don't what does that even mean for that matter uh that you can get out there and do something different that might not be seen uh in society's eyes as a common thing but i i'm glad that the world is changing slowly but changing and that you know there is better representation in for women in STEM fields. Um, but touching up on that question that you said that how's it helped that my ethnicity and my background and whatnot. So a lot of the friends I've made at college are all Hispanic, which is kind of crazy because that wasn't it wasn't that way back in high school. Um, and I think it's just you kind of find the people who you can relate to and who make you feel like you have a family away from, from your family. Uh, so being in college, you really try and find those really good friend groups and um, the, that doesn't come easy and you've got to put in some work into, you know, any friendship. But um, 
a lot of the organizations that I'm in kind of have some Hispanic back background in the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. And through that, I've met quite a few friends, um, all being Hispanic, of course, but uh, not limiting it to just that. I've met quite a few other people of different ethnic backgrounds here and there. I think it's just at the end of the day, you kind of stick with the people that you feel most comfortable with and that represent you and are similar to you. And it just so happens to be that way. Um, at least, you know, in finding my friends in, in college. And I'm not going to say that I have 50, 60,000 friends. Like, no, it's a really close group that I like to call my friends because they're the people that know me best and um, can understand where I come from and, and are there for me in the times that I need them the most. Wow. Very well said. Wow. As for fan, as like as for fan groups and different mm -hmm. circles and such, or you, your networks here and there, how would you define finding a good friend group or finding that good friend? Because some people they've either had past relations or past friend groups mm -hmm. where they don't accept it, or they don't know if they're being um, put in the right environment. Maybe they're um, they're not opening themselves to other opportunities. Maybe they're kind of just keeping with the same friend group. Mm -hmm. How do you go about keeping that growth, but also keeping a good positive environment? Um, so I think that's something that I probably still struggle to, to you know, cope with to this day, um, especially because it's at times, like I said earlier, it's hard to put yourself out there and, and, and try and get into a friend group, especially when, you know, we've, I've been in college for two years and all those friends group, friend groups have kind of already been made. So, you know, you already know those people you've stuck with for two years. It's really hard to, you know, to let someone new in. Um, but I'm always really open to meeting new people and, and just, you know, trying to relate to someone and putting myself in their shoes when I'm talking to them, being fully engaged, being a good listener, because I think that's that some people might lack that, that effort and that's why they can't make good friends. It's all about me. No, of course not. It's about listening to other people and making sure that they're heard as well. Um, a friendship is, is mutual. It's not just one person being heard at all times. Um, so I don't want, want to say I have like the perfect one, two, three steps in finding friends, but I definitely do think you got to put yourself out there and, um, meet people in different organizations you get involved with uh do a sport you know go to the gym maybe you need help with someone something ask the person right next to you if they can help you ask their name you know get their snapchat get their contact information and and keep that contact going it's not just hey like i met this person for one semester they were my study buddy and now it's over like it's continuing that relationship beyond that one two three weeks that you needed them or they needed you so i guess that's kind of been I get like, oh, I, wow, can I speak? <laughs> um, that That's like my overall tip or, or suggestion for people. Yeah. And, and I like that you mentioned that it goes both ways. And especially even working in teams, whether it be in research or other organizations, seeing something through to the very end, you have to be able to listen, communicate, just, just like you said. And mm -hmm. the way that you end up seeing that is, what do they do at the end? Is it a good piece or not a good piece? Does it have longevity? And yeah. the communication is definitely the foundation for that. Yeah. Wow. Totally. So as we're going forward here through this uh, podcast and conversation, um, when you're thinking about how, how do you want to apply your, your degree in the future, what are you doing now? Um, you, you, maybe you can talk about pre-COVID and then maybe during these past four or five months mm -hmm. and then transition in, into maybe what, what do you see for maybe next year or the next two years? Yeah, of course. Um, so basically, um, I guess from, from the start of, of my education um, in college, I knew that at some point I needed to get an internship to get some hands-on experience. So freshman year was kind of just, you know, get into college, fit in, find your friend group, find what you like to do, make sure this is the right path for you. Now you got that? All right, continue. Um, so a lot of my second year, um, I spent uh, networking and, and researching opportunities that I could do uh, during this summer. So I actually was able to attend the SHEP National Conference back in October, November-ish. Um, and that conference is basically, you know, just a Full on recruitment session. So you're talking to big companies like Amex, Visa, uh, 
companies along those lines for for me it was more civil based but i'm not going to talk about those companies because nobody knows them um <laughs> but it was just recruiting and, and applying to different internships beforehand getting there and, and talking to the recruiters asking them questions like I, I mentioned earlier in the podcast and hoping that you got an interview so you could get an internship um during that convention i had an interview it sucked really bad I, it was the most uncomfortable interview i've ever been in and the person interviewing me had no interest in me whatsoever so i felt it instantly but i didn't take that as a fall i kept applying and fortunately for me one of the companies i talked to then uh, reached out to me during christmas and said hey we have uh, we saw you applied uh, we saw that you talked to us at this conference um, we want to offer you an interview can you do it on this day so of course i have to be available um, so I got two interviews from the same company, just two different job locations for the same uh, gas engineering was what I applied to. Um, and after insisting so much, you know, I had two interviews and I got both job offers, but I ended up choosing one. And currently I'm working with that internship at a company is called MySource. It's basically just the gas company. And um, that's what I'm working on right now over, you know, the summer and that was, you know, what I started looking for back in fall. And thankfully, I was able to achieve that and get some hands-on work in different areas of my field that I could potentially be interested in. So right now, it's not assuring that I have a job upon graduation. It's testing out different areas within civil engineering because there's a way too many of the, on a list that you can choose from and seeing if this is the right path for me or maybe this is not what I'd like to do. Maybe I got to go for something like water or roadways or whatnot. So from here on out, my plan is kind of to do some research like on, on campus research. I want, I want to get involved in that and seeing, um, you know, kind of the educational side of, of engineering that I can do. But I want to keep researching other internships that I can get involved with. I don't want this one to be my first and my last and then get a job and, and never know anything else. Um, and I'm also trying to do a master's program and thankfully, in my um, in my university, they offer a four one program. So you start your master's in your undergrad, and you can just do it in one year. So that's something I look I'm looking into doing, uh, seeing if I can just you know wing out five years and graduate with a master's, um, and just you know getting as much experience and networking with professionals as much as I can to to learn about different areas uh, within civil engineering that could potentially interest me. Wow. That is a lot, but all of that put together, that's such a high valued layout of assets and skills that you're totally building that will going to be shooting you up like a rocket over there yeah. uh, right after the, your five years. But wow. Yeah. And especially when you talked about being in the interview process and then going to apply to so many. Oh yeah. I, during our phone call mm -hmm. a week ago, I mentioned I applied to like 30 or something like that. I, I definitely shot my shot. I said, I'm going to apply to as many internships as I can. I got to get as many rejection letters, but I'm sure after, you know, there's some number, you know, after nine rejections, you got to get that one. Um, but you know, you have to look at it in the, the eyes of you're hoping for the best for yourself. At the end of the day, it's, you're putting yourself out there and you can only expect so much and if, if I hadn't gone to this internship this summer, you know, I wouldn't be bummed. I would just say, okay, I got to do something else to better myself and see what, what did I not do right the first time? What's not on my resume? How can I make myself better? Wow. And just to clarify that, that's a form of reflection that a lot of people who are moving up slowly and improving themselves and also with other people and in their groups, that's, that's a good skill to have. And for us listeners here, even for me, that's something that we try to do whether it be after a project, during a project, before going into something and being able to reflect. And that's so cool that you mentioned that to us and uh, we're able to see how it applies to that situation. And it worked out. It worked out very well yes. for the situation. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the importance is, is having patience, not only, you know, with other people around you, but patience with yourself. You can't just, you know, set the bar so high and trying to accomplish so many things at once. It's, it's impossible. Um, you can try and I'm sure you'll get somewhere and you'll, you'll learn from your mistakes at the end of the day. So I never take any failure as, as just failure. It's always a learning experience. So yeah. And I like that about you when you talk and also have you like your last ending words, it's so humble and it's so clear. <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it.
so, so maybe for us too, or maybe for some other people, it's easier to kind of see what goes into making it to a conference. Or maybe it's like for an athlete, it's very, um, they know the process of how to get to a tournament. But of course. Do you want to do you, do you maybe want to maybe clarify a little bit of how did you get to that conference? Yeah, yeah, definitely left that out. I think it's a big important thing. Uh, so uh, there's quite a few organizations that uh, you can get yourself involved in um, nationwide. I'm, I'm sure that they exist, but especially specifically for me, there's um, the Society of Women Engineering, there's NESDI, the National Society of Black Engineers, and then the, the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. So I know of those three on my campus that have conferences every year and they're in different areas of the United States. So sometimes they're here in Florida, sometimes they got to fly out and go different places. But um, being a part of SHEP, um, they, they, you know, they ask us every year who wants to go, who doesn't want to go. And it's a free for all. Anybody can really attend, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, sure, you, you should be an engineering major, but honestly, anybody can go. There's, there's job opportunities for basically anybody. And so what I ended up doing was, you know, finding the people I wanted to room with. The conference was in, wow, oh, Phoenix, Arizona. And so it was, all right, we got to pay our membership fees, got to pay the convention fees. And then now we got to fly out, find an Airbnb, and be there for the whole weekend. Um, and basically that was it, you know, just try and plan it out make sure that you, you're setting up a budget because things can get expensive, obviously, like, it's not for everyone and there's always opportunities for grants or scholarships for these things. Uh, so definitely that was one thing I did research. Um, fortunately, I was able to pay for it because um, I was kind of last minute do, taking this opportunity. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go or not because I didn't know if I was going to have the opportunity you know, to re talk to recruiters and really get that job because I was only a second year. But I definitely think I was you know, making myself a lot or belittling myself for that matter. But um, so that was it. And then when October, November hit, we went to that conference and it was kind of like, you're on your A game, you better, you know, you paid so much money for this, you better try and get a job out of it. Um, and some people were lucky enough to get job offers on the spot. My roommate, she got, she literally only talked to one company, went to talked to them. They said, hey, here's an interview. She interviewed and instantly she got out 30 minutes later with the job. And I was like, there's no way, there's no way you did that. And I was like, I was so happy for her. But at the same time, you, you, you're you like, okay, when's this coming for me now? Um, definitely there's, you could say some jealousy, but it was just kind of being humble at the time and saying, no, the opportunity is going to come for me and just looking into it that way. But uh, I definitely suggest for anybody listening, you know, search for any conference that you can attend like that. Um, I, I mean, depending on your area where you live in, there's probably bigger conferences like that or small conferences with local people who are offering jobs or any research or internship opportunities. I know um, my school has a career fair every year where different recruiters come out for, for people who can't attend conferences and conventions like, like I did, and it's basically free. You talk to recruiters, you get a job. Um, they also have research fairs. Everyone that is doing research, professors, um, students doing PhDs or masters, even undergrads are presenting and uh, looking into that online. You could always find what research is on campus online, you know, emailing professors, emailing other students, getting in touch, networking with them, and then attending these research fairs and going, you know, shake their hand. It makes a big difference a face versus an email and trying to see what opportunities are for you yeah thank you for sharing because especially seeing that whole process go through whether it be the writing process applying yourself talking to people who are going to be helping you go to go to these conferences your mentors the older students your professors mm -hmm. and then actually I, li I like that you said it but making the most of your situation there and especially at a conference where all these people are together at a certain time it's overwhelming yeah yeah but it's also fun too it's exciting right oh yeah 100 percent. i mean there i don't i don't even know how many people were at the conference but there was definitely a, a good maybe two thousand people or so if not more and it, it's crazy seeing all these little like ants in in the little convention center just walking around everyone's doing the same thing you know everyone's got that same thing on their mind get a job get an internship get a research job so at the end of the day everyone's going for the same goal so it's like okay, we're all competing here, kind of 
make, it makes it makes it really exciting. Yeah, yeah, wow. And for going through these conferences and internships, is there maybe a dream internship that you want to get maybe by your third, fourth, fifth year, or after you have all your degrees, or where where do you see yourself and maybe doing something more? So yeah, definitely. So um, I'll, I'll share it now. Uh, the internship I'm currently doing, I think it's it's given me a lot of opportunities to learn, but I definitely think that the gas world for civil engineering is not something that I want to continue doing. Um, so that I think, I mean, my internship's not over. I still have like a month and a half, but so far I'm not in love with it. So I can definitely say that in the future, I know that there's um, a few different things in civil engineering that I want to get my hands on. And uh, one of them is doing either construction or structural work. Um, so looking towards the big companies, there's a company that I really, really want to work for and it's called Turner. So next year it's, it's a game, you know, try and contact every recruiter that I can get my hands on through LinkedIn um, and say, Hey, yo, I'm looking for an opportunity with you. Please tell me about your job. And I'm not going to ask them for an internship. I'm just going to start talking to them. And when they're too tired of me talking, they're going to offer me that interview and say, all right, here you go. And I'm going to nail it. And then we'll get the internship. <laughs> There you go. I like that. Taking that first initiative to just say, hello, what's your name? Wow. Yeah, exactly. I, I like that. And, th and that's but, very So go, what were you going to say? Oh, I was about to say, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty uncommon for people to be that straight up, but I like it though. Yeah. <laughs> it got to be. Um, but no, I definitely think that down the line, that's, that's a short-term goal for me. Um, doing my master's is my, I guess, short long-term goal because um, I still have to figure out if I want to do it at the same um, university I'm attending right now or if there's a better opportunity for me in another university with a, a better professor doing research and something that I want to do too. So I think that's my longer term. I yeah. yeah, and I like that you mentioned that. This, and even from the previous uh, couple minutes here, we're able to see what we have in front of us, but you're also, it may change. Oh, of I, might, course. I might feel different or I might seek something else elsewhere and being that open and also being that transparent with us here, us listeners also say, wow, I can do that too. If I'm, if I'm doing something right now and I feel stuck, I feel like my shutters are kind of closed, be able to lift that especially and see maybe what's uh, maybe what you haven't seen before. So exactly. yeah, seeing other opportunities. And as for, I know right now it's kind of like uh, to kind of talk about it, but for the COVID, as for the whole lockdown and everything, how was that, especially down there in Florida? Because, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I first found out about this, it was during, right before my spring break. And it was kind of just, you know, okay, this is a thing. It's fine. Nothing's going to happen. Like, we're just going to go back to school. That's end game. Um, and then everyone came back from my school was the first one to go on spring break. So everyone was like, all right, all these kids who are going to Mexico, who are going to the Bahamas, who are traveling like abroad are going to come back and they're going to have COVID. And I was like, no, it's fine. It's not a big deal. And then we came back and then a few days later, it was like, all right, we got four cases at the university. Everyone pack up and go home. So I had like three or four exams that week and I was pushing off delaying leaving campus because I needed to study and if I knew if I came home that was just gonna wreck me like I was not gonna be able to focus so I was like telling my parents hey just give me a week give me a week and as the week went on you know things started getting worse and worse and worse and then you know you go to the grocery stores you didn't see anything or you will try like I went to the pharmacy just to pick up my prescription or whatnot and then I was like okay there's this is rated I gotta rethink things and I was living at the dorm at a dorm at the time so I'm living with like 40 other kids on my floor and it's like okay we're all interacting in our common areas like the kitchen anytime we go to the water fountain things like that the elevator and I was like okay this is getting really sketchy and I started to like low-key freak out so um, I packed up my things and just the day before my exam, I packed up everything and came home. Got home, my my school's four hours away, so I drove home and then sat down, kept studying, grinded out to the next day and, and took my exams. And I've been home ever since, essentially. So um, I think it's all become just a routine thing now. I'm kind of just used to it, which is really unfortunate that we have to say that. Um, being used to, you know, wearing a mask or wearing gloves when you go to the gas station or go to pick up your prescription you go get groceries um and at first it was challenging I definitely got to say that doing school at home 
what it was easy during high school because I had no option like I lived at home but now that I went to college I was so used to going to the libraries every single day and just you know I had a routine and then coming home was always just you know my mom's gonna cook for me this is like a great two-day vacation or a great spring break now it's become okay I've been here for six months <laughs> um so it it's different it's definitely you know I had to switch up my routine completely um and honestly I've have I have more time to do more things at home because we've got to say my mom cooks for me so it's kind of amazing um but it was a struggle to to get to like where I'm at now and, and knowing that okay I still got to wake up early and do all my things I can't sleep until 10 or 11 like I want to every day just because I can't um no I can't I have school I have work like I still have priorities yeah yeah wow and especially from being in different areas it's probably different from each state here and there or your your living conditions or what city especially because some cities oh, totally. work harder, it seems like or maybe places are more urban or less urban more rural mm-hmm. and such but yeah to kind of see the effect especially on different people people losing their jobs um college students losing on their housing um, people losing money here and there and yeah such as opportunities people who are going to travel or go to other internships, it's kind of like, yeah. oh, dang. But um, those things have gotten canceled. Um, and, it's, and it's kind of hard, you know, to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And, and like for anybody listening, th- there is a light at the end of the tunnel. As cliche as that sounds, like just try and make the best of these, this opportunity that we have of, of being at home, whether that is, you know, calling up your friends, making sure that you don't lose those close connections or, um, trying to network online everybody's online so take advantage of that and and create a linkedin you know try and get connections and, and find people in the same field you're in and, and want to talk to and take this time to just you know self you know get to know yourself a little better um try something new um uh, get try a new hobby do something that you've never done before try baking a cake i don't know <laughs> do something different <laughs> Do you want to tell us some things that you've done during this time here? Yeah. Okay. So speaking <laughs> of baking a cake, um, <laughs> so I definitely took up quite a few, quite a few baking endeavors. Um, I made an airplane cake over quarantine. It, it, it kind of flopped. It didn't look so great, but I did it. Um, it was actually for a family friend. He got his uh, commercial piloting license and I said, I have nothing to do. Let me make him an airplane cake. And he loved it. At the end of the day, it was kind of like, okay, you took in the effort and the time to make like a cake in six hours that looks like crap, but it tastes amazing. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I did a lot of baking. I've done quite a bit of exercise and try and go on runs to just, you know, get out of the house. Sometimes, you know, it can be a little overwhelming when it's just me and my parents. Uh, I have no siblings, so I get everything, the bad things and the good things. Um, so I just try and get out of the house a little bit and go on a run or, or work out at home. Um, try and find one of those fun 30 minute Disney hip hop routines to dance to. <laughs> That'll be my workout for the day or whatnot. So uh, just honestly, I've been trying a lot of new things since I can't go to the gym. Um, so those are the two main things that I did take up. I also did quite a few puzzles at the beginning of quarantine um, and I've done so in the past, but I don't know why I stopped. I, I guess I just, you know, I haven't had the time to, but we'll make up for it. Yeah. Yeah, wow. And for everyone, it's it's pretty much different, especially depending on either it's because I know some people are working still, some people are not, and some people are actually doing classes. Um, didn't you mention you, you were doing a couple classes, right? Yeah, I'm actually taking uh, six credits over the summer. One of those classes already ended because um, it was a summer A course, but I have a summer C course, which lasts the whole entire summer. Yeah. Um, so I'm currently working on those two, so it's kind of just like the the fun of okay, you work a nine to five and you get off at five, you got lecture at five thirty, and then you got to do homework. So yeah. it's it's back to being a college student. Um, I just I'm working from home and doing schooling from home. Yeah, yeah, and that's great. And especially getting that, I, th- I think it would be great getting that prior experience, especially before the online, um, probably the whole online transition for fall and maybe maybe even spring who knows but <laughs> i know that face like, i know if, if, if nobody's watching this they did not see the face i just made but uh, we hope we don't get to that <laughs> yeah but i i can't or imagine taking like 13 15 16 credits 
a full, full that'll be me in the fall yeah all online it's like yeah lectures, the next lecture. the next semester i've been told that the classes i decided to take are, are probably some of the hardest classes that i take in my major yeah. and unfortunately i have to do them all online so we'll see how that goes <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah and especially you guys probably have labs or maybe applied things too or maybe presentations and stuff yeah they still haven't really figured out how my like what is today's the ninth tomorrow they release their official reopening plan so i kind of have to figure out what that's what's going to happen with that because i have like two or three classes that require labs so i don't know if there's going to be lab periods and they're just going to make like four kids show up and kind of split <laughs> us up in corners of the classroom but um they had to have to do something the labs online is just it's just a fail it's really hard to get that hands-on work with that yeah <laughs> they'll be saying Mariana go to your corner <laughs> <laughs> well, we're back to like pre-k when they would tell us to go sit in the corner <laughs> that's funny oh gosh yeah, yeah but hope ho yeah I'm just saying hopefully it turns out pretty well and especially we get a season yeah. in the spring or, or or even next year in the summertime get those intern internships going and such yes yeah and as for having your own groups or having mentors we're probably leaning towards the end of this uh conversation here but um yeah. you want to talk about maybe how to get mentors or how do you see mentors and groups playing out or maybe even yourself yeah, definitely. on mentees um so i've had the opportunity within the clubs that i'm in specifically in shep uh that they have a mentorship program so they pair you with someone um who kind of you know has the same similar interest as you or kind of you check the same boxes off or whatnot in the application and I've actually had two different intern, uh, sorry, mentors, and they, honestly, the the one my first year was she was a girl. She was absolutely amazing. She was a mechanical engineer, so she wasn't able to give me all the advice I needed for civil engineering, but she was able to get me adapted to college, and that's kind of what I needed. Um, and then when the second mentor I had, uh, he was a civil engineer, and he helped me through the transition period of like knowing how to interview knowing what questions they're going to ask me. He looked over my resume. Um, he didn't so much help me acclimate to college because at that point I didn't really require it anymore. I kind of just needed the professional help. Um, and so looking for mentors, I've it was super easy because of that opportunity that I had through um, my organization. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's not so difficult to, to find someone that can mentor you. Um, it, it might be difficult to find someone who can coach you that I think there's two different things. Um, and at the end of the day, I, my mentors have been more like coaches to me than they are. So mentors, mentors at the end of the day, I feel like are just people who are there that you can come to with questions that can give you their perspective and can give you professional advice, but they don't have to be there 24 seven. Um, and so I think that through, I've been able to find other mentors through LinkedIn. There's a, somebody I met at the convention actually and every like month or so I kind of keep them updated on anything new in my life and they they do the same for me um so I've been able to connect with people through that um and then also I've also done um I guess you I could call myself a mentor I've tried to help out some some people I knew back in high school who are either going to the same college or doing similar major as me um and try and get them adapted similar to what my mentor did back when I was a freshman. Yeah, wow. And, and being able to say, I guess, even having the experience of both ends, being able to receive that help, but also also give that help on to other people, that's definitely a good circle to build there because oh, it yeah. helps you get the insight into what's there for you in the future, but it also helps reinforce your own skills and what you've learned, yeah, through passing it off. Of course. <laughs> I was gonna say something and then I completely forgot. Um, uh, I, I saw that look. I was just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, there. but it's yeah. Uh, no, no. I was gonna say it, it. It does come full circle, and I think I enjoy being a mentor a lot more than I enjoy being a mentee. Just because I, I, it's not that I didn't like to learn from people. Of course I do. But at the end of the day, if I can give anybody anything that I've learned and pass it on, like I think that's just so much more fulfilling that okay, you got somewhere and you can actually tell people about this and, and, and that they can, you know, you could lead by example and that they can look up to you. Um, it's super gratifying. Yeah, there you go. And those, those of you who are listening probably comment or put some other comment or something about 
wanting to study under uh, Mariana here and should probably listen to her. I know, honestly, anybody who wants to reach out to me for anything, literally, whether that be females in STEM or being Hispanic in engineering, being Hispanic, period, uh, doing engineering of any sort, like, please feel free to reach out, have a conversation with me. I'm always like open to that. Yeah. All right. So I think we're about, I think we're about closing up here. So everyone like subscribe. We may have her on in the future again. So imagine if you weren't recording this whole time. <laughs> that, 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 that would be a tragedy. We'd have to redo everything. And then right. I would just be like, no, thanks. I'm good now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we'll probably ha have you on maybe again in, in the future here, maybe in a different series, maybe as you said, maybe in STEM, maybe put up 10 ladies here and there who are able to talk on their experiences. But yeah, thank you for your insight, your communication, and so much wisdom here. You have me taking notes and I'm like, wow, she's so brilliant. Aww. So, all right. No, thanks for, for anybody who's listening and for taking the time to, you know, stick 45, an hour, however long this was. Like, if you, if you stuck through the whole thing, thank you. I appreciate it. Down in the description, like, follow. Her Instagram will be there. Other, other information also. So thank you. Subscribe and have a good day. Yeah. Have a good day, everyone.